Hi folks, this is Dragon. Uh, just another video on uh, bone carving. Uh, I'm going to try to make some more objects and uh, certainly going to try and make another bone needle. Um, hopefully much better than the last one. But what we've got here in front of us, apart from my four-legged buddies in crime here, just iron off that bone. I tried to do a barter with me yesterday, it was no deal. There's a couple of important things that I've realised and, and there's, there's probably a lot more uh, to learn as I, as I proceed with this. Is that one that with a fresh bone, and this was a fresh bone from a butcher, um, I'm not going to go out and, and kill an animal just for the sake of a video. Um, there's quite a bit of meat and sinew and stuff and membrane left on the bone so first off is there's the preparation of the bone. Oh, that's got to be scraped off. Um, you may find some marrow in there. Well, that's got to be removed. And judging from the the honeycomb appearance around here of the inner bone, uh, it's not a a very old animal at all. So that's not really solid solid bone at all. So uh, that that could be a problem with um, further down the track with carving the bone. Another thing I noticed too was that the bones tend to have what uh, what I probably call uh, growth rings in them, much as you see on tree trunks when you cut a tree down, or you know, uh, similarly to a to a um, onion when you slice an onion. There's rings. Only on the bone they run longer tune that way. It's sort of like a, an indication of the the, the health of the uh, the animal and um, you know the, the calcium that's needed to strengthen these bones as the animal gets older. Now I've marked them with pencil there because it might be a bit hard to see on camera but uh, they're very distinct lines and these are flaws in the bone too that could cause you uh, some grief later on down the track when you're carving them. Um, the first uh, bone I used, as I said it was about two years old, um, on one piece of it, these rings or growth lines had actually separated. Um, it was quite noticeable, even though the separation was quite small, so that can cause you some problems too. What I did find was that with a fresh bone with all the meat and sinew on it, um, I managed to uh, scrape a fair bit of it off yesterday using uh, a piece of quartz. Uh, from our, went out, went out at our, our retreat last week, looking around on the ground out there. Um, it's uh, another type of rock, very hard sedimentary rock in its raw state. I haven't altered it in any way, shape or, or form. Um, it was a bit difficult to remove the, the fresh meat and, and uh, sinew and tissue uh, off the bone. So what I thought I'd do was leave it outside for a while and let it dry off. Um, and I had another go at this morning with the quartz using this uh, particular edge here. And uh, it cleaned it up quite a bit. But also I found, um, I'll just see if I can get it on camera here. Because I let it dry out a bit. You can actually tear that off comes off a lot easier than when it's uh, fresh or still got a lot of moisture in it. So um, that's just connecting tissue. There's probably even a little bit of sinew in that I'd say uh, on the bone. Yeah Jenna, it'll make your day happy won't it? Hey? Oh doggy heaven. Okay so that, that bone needs it's still cleaning up and I think I can probably do it with, scrape the rest of it off with um, with the rock. Now, because it's a much younger bone than the last one I used, I decided, well, I'll try and use these two rocks to try and cut a groove or something in this bone. Being a much younger bone, um, it's, it is actually much softer than the, um, the last one I used. And I'll uh, just see if I can bring it up on camera there. There's a pencil line. And I'll just rearrange this a bit. Let's 
sorry folks I'm doing this one handed at the moment uh, if you can see that pencil line there where that's where I've actually cut a groove in the um, the bone I don't know if you can see it there on camera um, using a combination of the quartz rock and uh, the other rock on the on the um, bucket here in the background so it can be done uh, as far as drilling holes in this I remember a long time ago uh, at some antique shop somewhere I saw these and basically like those hand twist drills this drill um, I'll bring it in camera here, there it is you can see there the spiral layer of the drill and um, the handle which is you know, meant to be used like that very good uh, for wood, it won't do steel but it'll do uh, wood, probably some soft metals like copper and aluminium um, plastics and that sort of thing, anyway I thought well I'll give them a go and see um, if I can um, try and at least start a hole in the bone, which I did. Uh, just there. Okay. I haven't gone right through yet, but it's certainly uh, a lot more effective than uh, what I tried, tried on the last one, the, the, the bone um, needle. But I do. I've got. I've got to say this, folks, that it is a real skill. And back in the days when I was using bone, I was quite proficient at it. And there's a fitness question comes into this too. You need very strong hands, fingers, um, wrist, arm and shoulder muscles to work bone. You really do. Um, yesterday while I was just scraping that down, and it wasn't probably all that strenuous. Um, it was giving an old injury of mine a bit of... Uh, grief so I had to stop for a while so yeah you know working bone um, it is it is um, hard work uh, particularly when you're using very primitive tools like rock this sort of thing these aren't as primitive but I'm trying to get away from using um, as I said before mains powered tools maybe 12 volt tools off a solar battery system but primarily uh, getting as far back as I possibly can to this sort of thing. Okay, so uh, that's the progress I've made on this. I've got other bones I had to put on top of the radio shack because uh, my four-legged friends here were eyeing them off yesterday. And uh, they tried to do a deal with me. It's called Bata Jetta. Didn't work. No deal. So uh, anyway folks, uh, as this progresses, I think it's going to be a fairly long series. Uh, it does take a lot of time, certainly a lot of patience, and I've yet to work out how to split this bone the way I want it, so uh, that's another issue that's going to come up soon. Thanks very much, and uh, stand by for the next episode whenever that is. Now. Well folks. This is the bone I uh, showed you in the first part of the video. Uh, su successfully cleaned off all the uh, flesh and other stuff off it with these rocks. So that was a step in the right direction. However, I tried to split the bone. I was hoping to get a uniform split. Once again it shattered, and bearing in mind this is green bone. So that's a problem in itself and in hindsight uh, when you look at animals and people they get a bone fracture particularly on leg bones and that sort of thing uh, more often than not the bone will will um, do something like this uh, commonly called a green stick fracture so the only way I could see at the moment is uh, uh, using very sharp rocks which I haven't got at the moment is probably carve or grind down the length of the bone to split it 
or to grind most of the bone off into the shape you want if you want to keep the full length of the, of the bone. So uh, that's that's still a problem. These are still usable. Um, and in fact, a lot of the smaller stuff, and I really haven't got that far yet, I'm not that advanced in skills and knowledge. Um, a lot of bone jewellery was made and it was quite often dyed with uh, plant material and uh, different colouring and that sort of thing so that's a long ways off for me at the moment I'm just trying to get the basic stuff down pat at the moment so uh, as far as grinding the rock I showed you the, the groove yesterday I ground into the um, there it is there actually into the rock uh, into the bone with the rock um, that's, that's quite easy uh, it, it does take a lot of work, but it's much, much easier with green bone. As far as sp splitting the bone, I think it's going to have to come down to the point where you, you're going to decide which parts of the, uh, of the um, animal you're going to use for what particular tools you want to make. For instance, and that's one of the bones that the dogs tried to trade with me the other day for a fresh bone. Hey Jetta, didn't work did it old girl? If you have a closer look up at that, I was talking about the growth rings. This bone's so old, I don't even know how old it is. You may be able to see it on camera, but you can see the um, very thin cracks going around. Like the, much like the growth lines on a tree. And that's quite often what happens as the bone um, ages and dries out after it's been removed from the animal. Um, that makes it more brittle. and uh, considerably harder to work with so um, that that's a good example of um, a better example of what I showed you yesterday you can have your bone back not real happy about that are you okay I just mentioned you might have to look at how to use the different bones uh, on the animal for, for to make different tools and implements and stuff like that so uh, this one was a leg bone. Um, these are rib bones off a uh, sheep or a lamb to be more precise. Very young lamb. And as you can see in the end there you've still got that honeycomb action where the bone is still forming and growing as the, the lamb matures. But up the top here the bone is a lot harder and uh, pretty solid. And uh, this is where it connects onto the vertebrae of the spine. So this morning, if you compare the two, I cleaned that one off uh, with the uh, stones or the rocks, cleaned all the flesh and other material off, there's still a little bit in the, on there, but compared to this one, which hasn't been touched at all, uh, you can see the difference. So removing sinew and, and membrane and, and residual meat and grizzle off the bone uh, with the rocks uh, has been successful. What I'm hoping to do is make a, another bone needle out of this, but not make it as small as the last one uh, we did. Uh, considering the fact that uh, you might have to use sinew or um, some sort of plant cordage as a thread for it. So the eye of the needle has to be quite big, and consequently in proportion, the needle has to be uh, quite big too, uh, particularly in diameter. So uh, that's it for this part. So uh, see how we go later on. Thanks very much. Well, this is the rib bone uh, we showed you yesterday. We cleaned up with the uh, rocks, got all the uh, meat, sinew, and connecting fibre off it. And what I've done today is started to. Um, grind it back with, bit with a rock. Um, the idea being is that I'll try and make another bone needle out of this. Where my uh, finger is there that'll be basically the the backbone of the needle. Jetta. Be nice. Hopefully that'll be the point just here. And what I'm hoping to do is to grind it back down this way uh, just to make it a, a bit more slimmer 
it certainly won't be as round as the last one, it'll be more flat. Um, and hopefully up this end some t sometime, some, uh, where, where I can actually try and um, put the, um, the eye of the needle in there, in there. hopefully. Um, I might have to um, try and put it in with a um, very sharp uh, metal tip object like a screwdriver or maybe a tip of a knife blade or one of those uh, hand uh, twist uh, drill bits that um, I showed you yesterday or the day before. Now this is progressing along quite well. Um, as I said this is a young bone off a lamb and uh, during the course of time over the last couple of days as I've scraped it off uh, sat it out in the sun for a while the bone is starting to harden up whereas before when it was fresh it there was still a bit of flexibility in it but it's um, starting to harden up quite a bit now so we'll see how we go with that well folks this is that rib bone You can see there I've ground about a bit and tried to make the um, the width of it fairly consistent. Uh, I used a combination of these rocks and um, of course a um, metal file too. So I've had to use a combination of uh, both both uh, old and uh, new technology for this. So uh, I don't know that I'll take it much thinner because I want to put quite a big uh, needle hole in this end of it here uh, for much thicker um, cordage, be it plant or uh, sinew cordage or, or something like that as opposed to the last needle, uh, needle that uh, we made. So I guess it comes down to uh, pretty much the same philosophy with modern day needles. You've got different sizes, different thicknesses, uh, different shapes for all different types of purposes and reasons. This one's got a bit of a curve on it. Um, from the limited sewing I've done I found that uh, a little bit of a curve in, the ne in a needle is uh, actually uh, more to an advantage uh, than some of the straight needles but you know, it depends on the applications too. So uh, that's it. Um, as I said it's a young bone you can just from the um, the edge I've been filing away there with the rock and the, the other file um, you can see a very thin layer of calcium but in between that is the, the honeycomb layer uh, where the bone was still developing so uh, probably um, I would use a more mature bone uh, bearing in mind that it can be harder to work with. This bone has dried out considerably over the last couple of days of it uh, since uh, I cleaned all the um, flesh off it. So that should harden up quite well. Um, there's nowhere as much, near as much flexibility in there as it was as, as it was as a, a raw bone a couple of days ago. The tip, um, yep, it's pretty sharp. Remembering it's bone, not metal, so uh, a bone has a tendency, uh, you try and make it needle sharp like steel or something like that, it quite often the, um, the tip part will, will snap off. Again, um, in the event that um, you do happen to break the tip off, uh, they're quite easy to reshape and uh, resharpen. Uh, also along the, uh, the edges here, I've rounded them off uh, because we really, um, when it's passing through material, uh, what it is, whatever it is that uh, is being sewn, it, uh, you want a fairly smooth transition through there um, without it being caught up on the jagged edges of uh, you know the freshly um, filed or sanded bone. So the next one, um, and this is going to be the tricky bit, is uh, putting a hole, a needle eye or hole in the end. I'll try these tools first. See how that goes. I I really don't know how it's going to go, and actually these ones uh, you could use as, as awls themselves. Um, I thought of that the other day after the, the last video segment on this. So um, we'll see how we go with these. Um, there's four different uh, thicknesses there. 
so uh, I would tend to try and start off with a small one first it's like a corkscrew type uh, thread on the end of it and uh, see where we go from there okay been pretty successful so far um, I've used these uh, metal hand drills I first started off with this one just to make um, sort of like a pilot indentation on the hard calcium outer layer of the bone um, basically I'm working uh, with one hand in here but what I did was was hold the top with one hand steady on a hard surface and just twisted the bone around the, um, the metal uh, hand screw there uh, the reason why I did that was that I was able to keep the hand screw a lot more stable uh, to help prevent any splitting of the bone so it's a case of um, just putting downward pressure on it and just turning the bone uh, in a circle or, uh, as it is there now at the moment that all is pretty well it was pretty well stuck there so I know I punch it through the um, the outer layer of um, harder calcium and into the uh, honeycomb uh, midsection of it so um, we'll persevere with that uh, there's been no sign of it cracking yet so uh, fingers crossed uh, we'll see how we go Well, this is the, uh, the metal um, hand drill bit. It's gone through the bone and it's just starting to come through the other side there. So I think at this stage is that I'll uh, start drilling from uh, this uh, exposed side at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if that bone's starting to split or not, but uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, folks. Well, that... Uh, bit has come through okay had to drill uh, from the other side hand drill from the other side I think there's a bit of a hairline crack up towards the end of this but it's only on one side of this uh, bone needle so, uh, it's not on this that side exposed now so um, we'll see how we go with it I'll, I'll try and uh, make the hole a bit bigger hopefully without doing too much more damage to the bone but that's uh, we've gone through it the way you can see it there or not have a closer look at that bone the outer edges of the, the calcium and the inside is of the honeycomb so uh, as I said this bone was very young and uh, wasn't uh, a mature or adult uh, animal so uh, some success there so uh, I'll see if I can make that hole a bit bigger without destroying it and uh, see how we go Well, folks, that's pretty much the uh, finished product. Um, the overall length of that is uh, about three inches long. A little bit longer than the first one we made. Um, certainly, it's a much uh, thicker or broader bone than the um, the first one we made. And uh, as I said before, I guess it comes down to different size needles. Uh, for different types of sewing, uh, I certainly wouldn't do needle point with this, but you know, for much tougher stuff, uh, it should do the trick. And one thing I did find, and if you're using um, something like this to drill a hole in it, um, I thought I'd try these out first rather than try and carve a hole, is that um, you've got to be very, very careful, take it very, very slowly not because of overheating or anything but you've got to twist and counter twist twist and counter twist just to um, clear the, the uh, bone dust out of there and not to put too much pressure particularly on this young bone uh, to the point where it cracks so it's twist and counter twist uh, takes, takes a while um, takes a bit of practice as far as I can tell I'm only, I've only got one hairline crack on one side of this which is, I can't tell which side it is um, that's how small it is anyway, the hairline crack so uh, that's the second attempt um, I must say I'm, I'm, in a lot of ways I'm happier with this one the way it turned out 
I guess with the other one I tried to make it too small hence the problem with uh, particularly the eye of the needle um, even with uh, modern day type thread uh, as I said we tried to put uh, jute string through it as a thread on the first one and uh, the hole was too small so I used butcher's twine so uh, making progress learning a lot and no doubt a hell of a lot more to learn and people may ask well why are you using bone well it's a skill I'd have thought well why not give it a go but you can do this pretty much the same thing with um, certain types of hardwood out there you've got the right tools to do it um, other parts of the animal like uh, on deer the um, the antlers on them and that sort of thing and uh, you know people that make things out of that will, um, I should imagine they come up against some of the same problems I will say this that this leg bone I had trouble, sh trouble uh, shattering or breaking um, it is a problem but a fully intact one a hollow one um, they would make good handles for um, other tools, uh, defensive weapons as, uh, such as um, uh, more like dagger type material you'll never ever get a, a bone edge on this if you make a blade as sharp as a steel blade but uh, that's something I might try later on actually um, more for hunting uh, a type of dagger type thing so uh, there it is folks I'll keep persevering with this over time uh, as I said before I've got a shoulder blade in the freezer I want to make uh, something out of that and that uh, just the shape of that bone it has a lot of potential for, for a lot of um, other implements and so, so forth so uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with that I might ask Mrs Dragon later on to see if she can sew with it but, uh, all right folks thanks for watching this part anyway Okay, folks. This is uh, just a comparison. The uh, the needle on the left is uh, the one we made uh, some time ago uh, at a very uh, dry old bone, and uh, still got the butcher's twine in it, which which Mrs. Dragon used uh, to demonstrate sewing with that. And the one on the right is uh, the needle uh, I've just completed today. It's a little bit darker, yes, because it's fresh bone. Um, it hasn't been bleached with age or the sun and as you can see there's uh, quite a bit of difference in size both in um, length uh, certainly the width of the needle and um, with the eye of the, of the, the new needle today uh, we've actually got jute um, thread through it whereas we couldn't thread it through uh, this one here before so uh, that gives you some idea uh, difference between the two of them certainly this one is going to make a bigger hole in whatever you're sewing but again it comes down to what you're sewing and um, the type of material you want to sew um, certainly with hessian this worked out quite well Although I had to use, uh, well, I suppose it's a type of synthetic thread on it. Whereas this one, yes, it should be able to um, sew hessian with jute string. Uh, though, I, though it's commercial jute string, but it's uh, all plant fibre. And uh, it'll no doubt make a bigger hole uh, as you um, pull the thread through. But the case being that... Um, some material you want to sew, it might be animal hide, uh, soft leather, something like that um, then it may not matter as much uh, with the type of thread that you're using compared to uh, this one where you're very very restricted with the size of thread you want to use alright folks, that'll give you some idea anyway certainly been an experience and uh, it's not finished yet, uh, as I said I've got other projects in the works for these for some bone work so uh, we'll see how we go with that sometime later thanks very much